Hello, I'm Dr. Aaron Dishno, inventor of Walk the Web 3D Browsing. And the next tutorial I'm going to go through are some of the editor settings that will help you and make your life easier while you're designing 3D buildings, communities, and 3D things. So to begin, let's go to 3D.WalkTheWeb.com. If you haven't logged on, please log on. And in the menu, you can also click on the top item, which is going to be taking you to the uh, admin pages. Then next, in the admin menu on the left, if you scroll or looking at all the way down to the bottom, you'll see editor settings. Now, in the editor settings, the very first one, simple enough, turn on gravity or turn off gravity. Now, when you're moving around a building, this comes in very handy to get a bird's eye view. Like right now, if I try to walk above the building when gravity's on, all I do is walk forward. So if I turn off the gravity, I can actually aim my cursor towards the sky and as I walk forward it'll walk up into the sky. So then using up and down angles of view when you pan the view if you back up or go forward you'll actually get a bird's eye view of something. This is very helpful for getting an idea of what your building looks like from a distance or if you're working on a second floor of your building or higher and you want to get a bird's eye view to see if everything's lining up the way you think it is this is a good way to deal with it. Okay so gravity on. The next thing is turn off or on wall collisions. Now this one turning on the wall collision or turning off the wall collisions first of all allows you to pass through walls. So notice I just walked right through the wall. I was able to go in and out even though there's no door there, there's no window. I'm able to walk right through the walls and travel anywhere I need to. This is helpful especially before you build a a door or window in a building to be able to pass through and look at the inside of the building and see how did that align and where is it sitting and make sure everything's correct but then at the same time easily pass through and see the other side of the object without having to go around over under or anything else now separate than wall collisions is floor collisions now remember when we first created the building one of the things is there's a box there's a wall there's all these other shapes and then there's a floor. Floor has a unique position as in if you create a second floor you, if you use that then it actually has this other property attached to it where I can leave gravity on I can walk around on that floor but yet not fall through it but then at times when I do want to go through different floors I can turn off floor collisions. Now if I had a multi-story building I could pass through walls and right through the floor of the building to the next level and go back and forth vertically. Um, another thing just to keep in mind for future enhancements is there will be a time where we have elevators and different things like that and when that happens if you use floor then we'll have some type of system to let the elevator know where to stop. It'll match up with the floors of the different levels of a building. So future looking ahead, you'd want to use a floor whenever possible when you're creating your different levels. Okay. Another thing to note, if I have floor collisions on or off, um, let's say I have them turned on so that you can't pass through the wall now. Sometimes when I have them off and I create a new object by default it may have them turned on but if you just toggle this off again and then on again or vice versa then you can pass through the wall again as needed so you may have to refresh and just let it know which setting you're using the next thing is show merge shapes now in the previous lesson I showed you how we can actually take a box and cut it out of our front wall to make a doorway and a window well Right now, if we wanted to change the size of the door or window, we don't have an object to right click on and make that change. So if you turn on show merge shapes, they now become shaded boxes in place where they are. So if I want to change the door, I right click on that shaded box and I can grab it and I can make new changes to where it's sitting. I can move it, I can resize it or anything you need to do. So that's just another way of how you can grab and find uh, a box that you have. Now, when you have those turned on and you have collisions on, you won't be able to walk through those boxes. So a lot of the time, I mix the two and I'll have turn off the wall collisions and I'll show the boxes. Now I can pass right through with no trouble. 
um, there's another setting. Oh, you can turn those back off just by clicking it again. And now there's another setting called Show Action Zones. Action Zones will appear similar to what you just saw with the boxes in the doorways, but I'm going to show you. I'll turn them on, but notice we don't have any yet. And then if I back up far enough, you see this great big box around the building. I think you saw it briefly, right? I might have to show it again. Oops. Show show action zones. See that there's a big box around the building. This is what we call an action zone. In this particular one, it's a load zone. Notice how when I walk forward and I pass through that, all of a sudden the building appears. That's a future lesson called a load zone, but those are your action zones. So you'll be able to see something that when you're inside the box opposed to out of it, you can trigger different things to happen in your scene. So showing our hiding action zones. Now we have hide editor lines. Uh, this particular one, remember when we right click on a wall, notice how it has all the editor lines sticking out to show us how it's aligning above it, below it, sideways. Well, turning off those lines, which all I have to do is cancel or click back. If I go back to my editor settings and I say hide editor lines, now when I right click, those lines are gone. Sometimes they may get in the way depending on what you're working on, especially with smaller objects. And so you may or may not want to see those. What I noticed is if I don't have them on, I can think that I'm aligning something and all of a sudden I'll look at it from a different angle and find out I'm five feet off the ground and not even realizing it. So to me, I kind of leave them on most of the time. Another helpful piece is to hide the access labels. Now this, these labels are the ones that say um, move Y, move X, and move Z in the different directions whenever you highlight an object. So let me turn them on so you can see like up here on top it says move Y, shows you where the access is so that you can move it up or down, left, right, or whichever direction you need to. Well note, if I'm working on an object that is very small, let's say a doorknob, and let's just picture a doorknob that's that big, and all of a sudden you're trying to uh, put an access label on it that's this big, it gets very hard to see the small object. So if you turn off those objects, hide the access labels, now when you right click, they don't appear. Now you can work with your smaller objects with no trouble. Okay, and the last one, um, show the guide arrows. The guide arrows are these two arrows in the bottom of your screen. Now, you may or may not want to hide those, but you do have the option to make them disappear from the screen. Uh, that would be more like if you're doing screenshots of something and you don't want it in the way. You can, you can hide them. And see, we just click the button to hide them, and you can click them to show them again. Now, before I go to the advanced setting, there's one other place I want to show you that there's some settings. If you go to the menu on the right, and there's a section specifically for settings, you're going to see a few things. First of all, movement speed. This is when you're walking around or panning the view, you can change the speed that it happens. So the fact that my computer works at one speed when I turn and rotate and look at different things, that's here. You can have it set to a different thing that makes it work perfect for you. Every computer reacts differently, so and every mouse is more sensitive or not. And so even on your keyboard settings, this will adjust if you're walking or panning in speed. You can slow it down or speed it up to how fast it moves when you move. Uh, you could set it where if you move your mouse just a small distance, it'll move all the way around in a circle, all the way down to you, could, you would have to move it left and right 10 times to get around in a circle. The next setting is multi-user options. When you're in admin mode, multi-user is shut off so you won't be seeing other people walking around in your work. That's only in the browse mode that that works. Graphics quality, this one's important in your, in your mode. When you're working on the graphics on the building, if you're using the low-end graphics, they're going to appear blurry when you're up close to them and everything. But yet, if you want to see how it looks in high mode, even if you have a slow computer, you may want to see what it looks like for the people that are using the high graphics quality. And so you can turn it up and it'll refresh and show you. In fact, let me slow it down and I'm going to, I'm in high mode right now, but let me take it down to low 
And notice that each time you click it, it'll refresh the screen in that mode. So it's actually showing me right here, this is 256 by 256 squares instead of the 512. And then if I go to settings again, graphics quality, I can drop it down to 80 by 80 thumbnail graphic size. And you'll notice they're a little bit more blurry. And especially if you get up close, you start to see how the lines aren't as concrete as they were before. But if you have a slower computer or you're on a tablet or a cell phone, these small graphics tend to look decent enough that you can get around and still get the main picture of what it looks like and yet you can move fast. So it kind of compromises either the speed of the rendering or how fast you can move around. So in my case when I'm building things I tend to like to see exactly what they're going to look like in the final stages so I tend to turn it up to high while I'm building and I can always slow it down in the browser when I'm walking around buildings if it starts to look a little little slow. So I'm going to crank that back up to high. And the final setting over here is the shadows. Now by default shadows are turned off in admin mode because in browsing mode we have a certain number of things loaded to be able to browse a site. In admin mode we add a ton more scripts to be able to do all this functionality of, of creating and building your site. Because of that, and because of how much memory you have in your computer and everything else, it actually works smoother and faster to not have shadows on in admin mode. So by default, they're turned off. You can always turn them on just by clicking on it. Um, there's like four settings of shadows, and it's not so much the quality, well, it's a little bit of the quality of the shadow of, of how big the pixel size is of shadows, but also what casts a shadow on the different levels. For example, one will show normal walls casting shadows on anything that's labeled as a floor or ground or ground terrain and stuff. Um, level two would go a step higher and do things that were created in your community and let them cast shadows. Uh, level three might be more items that normally wouldn't cast a shadow now are allowed to cast shadows or even receive shadows all the way to the ultimate which is practically everything either can cast or receive a shadow. Now keep in mind just like with the graphics the more shadows you cast those are more things that are being rendered as you're moving so if your computer is running slow go down to the lower settings you'll still get a great experience and a lot of faster movement. Okay, so then other than those settings, if we go back to the admin settings, I'm going to show you the remainder of the settings here, uh, the advanced settings. This has to do if you're actually going to be programming against our code. And that's futuristic at this point in time with the tutorials, but just to let you know, if you expand this section, It'll say, if you hit F12 in your browser, it brings open a window on the right side of the screen. Now, for each one of these items that you click on, you can actually get a list of everything that's rendered on the screen at a time. So, like, list the current meshes. Notice it'll tell me exactly which meshes they are. Um, little thing in that, just a quick note, building molds are part of your building. Community molds are part of your community. Thing molds are part of your things. And if you look close enough, these all say box in the name. That's telling you that they're all created from boxes. We have some action zones. We have, by default, we have a person, we have a sky, and we have the community ground. Okay, next is connecting grids. We'll get to those. We'll talk more about those in the future. But any one of these items here, connecting grids, action zones, uh, list community molds, list building molds, thing molds, list automations, and list forms, and list materials. Each one of these can produce a list of whatever is currently loaded in the arrays, if they're a technical person, in the arrays in JavaScript behind the scenes. Now, picture this. The 3D graphics engine that we're using only works with what you're rendering at the moment and it only loads and uses those objects. Now because of 3D browsing we're juggling which of those objects are put in memory or not at any one time. So even though the graphics engine has its list of what it runs, this is what we're saying is in your range that I may need to add to the graphics engine at a time like all the parts of a building. I may walk close enough and say now I want to see these walls. So 
that's just a little ahead of the time, but gives you a quick idea of how you can find out what is loaded at any one time in the actual Walk the Web engine. Okay, and that concludes the editor settings. So if you have any questions or you can always hit me in the blogs, but also um, that should allow you to get a little bit more comfortable with walking around and traveling through things as needed and make it a little more comfortable to build up and work with the different items that you're working with in your creations. Uh, so if you'd like to see more about this tutorial or others, please see the website walktheweb.com and um, thank you for watching.